Hello, my name is Marcus Maxwell and today I'll be showing you an overview of Kubernetes concepts and architecture. Kubernetes on a very high level looks pretty much like this. You have your Kubernetes client, which is kubectl. You have your API, which is running on the masters. You have all your state and all the configuration defined in CD. And then you have your nodes that you actually run the workloads on. The kubectl can be a Kubernetes dashboard also, or any other client, the way you communicate with the API server. The etcd can be running on the master, or it can be running outside of the cluster, depending on your high availability needs. And then you have one or more nodes in your cluster that you run actual workloads on. So what does a master consist of? So it has three main parts. It has the API server, which is like the central brain and everything goes pretty much through it. So for example, when you run commands on the kubectl, it always first hits the API server, which then goes to the etcd store. You have the controller manager that always looks after your cluster and runs any commands you execute against the API server. And then we have the kube scheduler which essentially makes sure that any workloads that you scheduled, it finds a free node and schedules your workload on that node. So as you can see here, we have our Kubernetes master in the middle. It consists of an OS image. It can be a more bigger image like a full Red Hat OS, or it can be a container specific one like a Project Atomic or CoreOS. Then we have a container runtime that can be Docker or that we can CRIO. And on top of that, we can run it as a Docker image or we can run it as a, a service, a regular one on systemd. And essentially what it will consist of is controller, API and scheduler. Now going over the nodes, on the nodes we only have a main one single component, which is the kubelet. And Kubelet essentially takes it, its information from the masters. And if the masters say, this node should run this pod, the Kubelet will go figure out how to do it and run that workload for you. So you can see here that we have multiple nodes. We still have the OS image, we have the Kubelet, and then the Kubelet essentially schedules a different myriad of pods for us. So we can have big pods, we can have smaller pods, and they can be different and belonging to different apps and different users. So that's essentially what we get. Now, a pod is the smallest concept that we have in Kubernetes. It's not a container. A pod is a little bit higher up on the chain. So a pod can consist of one or more containers, Usually you will find out that most pods are single, single container to make it simple. And then we have services. Services essentially allow us to uh, find out more pods. So for example, you wouldn't necessarily go to a specific pod yourself by its IP address. Instead, you will go to a service and the service will route your traffic to the specific pod because pods are more ephemeral, they keep coming and going, and the services are more stable, and that's how you will communicate between different services. So it's a nice abstraction on top. So next up we have volumes. Volumes essentially allow us to keep state in our cluster or keep any information that we want. And namespaces are mostly for separating different workloads from each other and have an easy way to separate also the resource constraints on each. So for example, you can have 10 developers, give them each a namespace and say, each namespace should like not consume more than two cores and two gigabytes of RAM. So it gives a nice similar workload for each developer to work in. Next up, we have a few more advanced uh, concepts. That's replica sets and replication controllers. With replica sets, uh, it's a little bit newer feature than replication controllers. Essentially, both allow you to 
uh, ensure when you launch a pod that you can say, I want five pods and they will ensure that we will have five pods in our cluster if there's not, of course, available nodes. Uh, the main thing to remember is that replica sets now supersede the replication controllers. So, uh, and the main only difference is replica sets allow more regex way of selecting the pods. So they're a little bit more advanced. Uh, that being said, usually you will not deal with replica sets or replication controllers. You will go directly to deployments, which essentially combine replica sets and add one additional very nice feature that you can roll out new images and roll back images. So it allows you for like a nice continuous deployment scenarios. Stateful sets allow you to run uh, databases essentially in your cluster or anything that requires some persistent state. They make it much a lot easier. Daemon sets uh, ensure that there is at least one pod running on each node. So you will usually use daemon sets for like logging drivers or monitoring agents or security agents that you want to run across your whole cluster. And jobs are mainly, you can think of them like cron jobs or one-off jobs that you want to just run. So let's say you have some batch processing, you only want to run it once on that batch. Once you run your job, it finishes off, then you're pretty much done and all the pods get destroyed and you don't have to uh, worry that there will be like some stranglers there. Uh, that's it for the concepts. I think now let's jump into actually see what's underneath. I will demo now how to run a basic pod and a service uh, through Minikube on your own machine. So here I have a pod YAML and a service YAML. So in this case you can see here is a very simple uh, YAML that I try to kept as simple as possible for demo purposes. You can see that we specify the API version, v1, which is stable. We specify what kind of the ob object we want. In this case, we want a pod. We specify some metadata, in this case, a name. That's the minimum you have to specify. We also specify a label that will allow us to uh, make sure we can add this to a service. Then we specify the spec, and this is the main bit where we specify the containers for this pod. So in this case, we specify an Nginx container. In this case, it will go by default to Docker Hub to grab the Nginx one. And then we have ports, and in this case, it's port 80. And as you probably know, we can run multiple containers in a single pod. So if I wanted to, I could say name MySQL, add the image port, and I will have Nginx and MySQL inside of the same container. To keep it simple, let's just launch one pod with one container. So to do that, we type kubectl create the chef pod.yaml. So what happened now is we created an Nginx pod. We can double check that that's actually true with kubectl get pods. And we can see our Nginx pod is running. So that's good, but we don't really have a nice way to reach our pod. It's running in a VM and we don't have the roots set up on our machine. So what we essentially want is to set up a service that will allow us to easily access our Nginx instance. So we have a service.yaml definition. And again, you can see pretty much same syntax uh, as we had in the pod. So we specify the API version. We specify what kind of object this is, some metadata, and then the spec is quite different from uh, what we had in the in the pod definition. In this case, we specify the ports 
and the main bit that we want also is the selector. So thanks to that label that we previously added on our engine next one. So here we had our label app engine X. And here we specify that as a selector. So let's say we had multiple pods with that label. It will go and look, find all of them and essentially add them to it to its uh, to the service and we will be able to target any of them. And it will be essentially a round robin for the way we can access those. We also specify something called node port, which essentially is opens a port uh, on a quite high number that allows us to reach this service. Uh, the type can be load balancer or node port, it really depends on where you're running your Kubernetes cluster. In this case, we're on Minikube, so it's node port. So let's create our service. It's again pretty much the same thing. You can see that our service was created. We can also check that if it's true. And we can see that we have our Nginx service running and it went through this port. And we also have it on a node port here. So let's now try to actually reach this. So if I go to Minikube. Minikube has this command that allows me to open essentially a service uh, automatically in my browser by just running Minikube service and then service name, which is Nginx service. And that's it. So we have our VM running on this AP and on this node port we have Nginx. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Bye.